We're looking at question three of the 2015 semester two exam paper. And this one is about working capital. We've got some accounts receivable figures in thousands and we've got some credit sales figures in thousands. And what we need to do is we need to calculate the average accounts receivable. Now average accounts receivable is just the sum of these two divided by two. Uh, and then it'd be the sum of these two divided by two. And then the sum of these two divided by two. So, so let's do that first. So for 2015, we're doing question number three, A. So 2015, I've got 24 plus 30 divided by two to give me, what's 24, that's 54 divided by two is 27. Now 2014, I'll have 30 plus 36 divided by two equals 30. And then for 2013, I'll have 36 plus 46, so 36 plus 46 divided by 2 equals, what's that, 70, 82, gives me 41. So there's my averages. So I've got 27, 33, 41. Okay. So I've calculated my average accounts receivable. It says calculate the average settlement days for accounts receivable. Now, calculating settlement days is my average accounts receivable accounts receivable divided by my credit sales times 365. So we've got our credit sales figures down here. So let's just calculate this one for 2015. That equals, what is it? Average accounts receivable we calculate to be 27. So 27 divided by 365 times 365. This one should be easy to calculate. So let's just use the calculator anyway. 27 divided by 365 times 365 equals 27,000. Oh no, 27 days. So 2014, we worked out our average settlement, uh, our average accounts receivable was 33,000. We're going to divide that by our 400 times 365. Let's work that out. Thirty point one one days. I'll put it to thirty point one. You can put thirty days. And for two thousand and thirteen, I've got my average of forty one. So I've got forty one divided by four sixty five times three sixty five. Let's try that one again. 41 divided by 465 times 365 equals 32.18. I'll go 32.2 days. You don't have to do it to, you could have just put 32. 32 gets you the right answer as well. All right. It says there are many benefits and costs to offering credit to customers. List two benefits and two costs of offering credit to customers. So let's have a look at the benefits first. Now obviously I'm going to list all the possible answers. Uh, first one is attracting new customers. And we do that by offering credit. So people like the idea of credit, so take now, pay later. It encourages customers to to bring forward purchases because now they can uh, now they can um, actually afford to them, so they can you know 
uh, attracts impulse purchases so people buy things that they might not normally would have bought um, attracts customers the other that that otherwise would not have purchased and um, it actually reduces the cost of making a sale So now you get about any two of those that would have got you a, a mark each. My costs on the other side, there's opportunity cost, which means that you tie money up in accounts receivable. In accounts receivable. There's always the cost of slow payers. See. And then there's the cost of administrating uh, an AR system. accounts receivable system. Now usually that means you have to employ someone. So any one of those two would have worked out as well, which would have got you your four marks.